So, Wokey Leaks looks fun. <laughs> Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Like my father always told me growing up, the truth will always out. Recently, I was watching some of my favorite YouTubers while looking for my next bit of inspiration for my show and came across one from Paul Joseph Watson that kind of piqued my interest into doing some extra research on it. I'll post the link to his video in the description below so you can see for yourself. In this video, I'm going to give you a synopsis of what this new Wokey Leaks website is all about. I will pull a Tim Pool on you and read an article from the anonymous founder, who themselves is a they-them, or so they claim. Hey, that worked out well, didn't it? But don't get me distracted. Then I will give you my two cents if you can still stand the sound of my voice by the end of this video. I know that most folks don't watch an entire video anymore. I may just end this one in the middle, just to see who's paying attention. But before I start, if you enjoy my work and you want to help me become a live call-in talk show like our favorites, please make sure that you share this and my other videos. I would also appreciate a comment, a subscribe, a like, and of course, a donation would be the ultimate. My unique gifts are still available and being shipped out for donations. Huge thank you to everyone out there who has supported me so far. Thank you, thank you. At least hit the like button, okay? It doesn't take that long. You can do it while you're watching the rest of this video. Okay, back to it. They have dubbed it Wokey Leaks, which to me, based on what I'm seeing and hearing so far, seems like it's going to be the Project Veritas of the elitist woke crowd. One can only hope. Essentially, the founder of this site is an insider in all the it crowds. You know, actors and politicians, models, journalists, activists, all of the above that act like activists. <gasps> Did I give something away? Anyway. This insider is so disgusted with the hypocritical actions of the woke elitist crowds that he now feels the need to expose them. So, finally, somebody to prove to me at least all the suspicions I've had all along about these do-gooders that just seem to hoard more and more millions while the rest of us are supposed to give our meager wages and belongings to their causes, which probably pay these celebrities to advocate for these sometimes bullshit causes to begin with. I know that it has to be in the contract somewhere. Now here's a tidbit that, if true, will kind of mess with the tea community if you catch my drift. Now, this person even spilled the beans to the point of confiding in PJW that one of these woke activists, if you will, faked their transition merely for the grift of it. Meanwhile, living a wild bachelor life. Now, I don't know what they call bachelors these days. Uh, perhaps player, maybe? Uh, I'm sure I'm behind the times here. However, I find it very ironic, and I might be aging myself here, how at one time the term confirmed bachelor meant gay, which was the exact opposite of bachelor at the time. But don't get me distracted. So actually, that's the whole point of the new Wokey Leaks, an insider who is disgusted at the woke crowd for not practicing at all what they preach to those of us 
beneath them. You know, the ones that actually make these celebrities uber rich by buying all their merchandise and following their pseudo fascinating lives while these celebrities indulge And yes, I just made that up. It is a combination of indulging and advertising in which the celebrity indulges in all the perks of what the sponsor gives said celebrity to advertise and pays them as well. Said celebrity then advertises to their masses that consuming these products that they are indulging in is what it takes to be in the in crowd too. So now all this money, fame, accolades, and everything in turn makes these elitists as all knowing as they think they are. And yes, you heard that right. Actually, I cannot wait to hear more stories like the one he tells about a group of actors, or rather actors acting like activists. These folks were so enthralled in their activism on TikTok and Instagram and with each other that they literally left their guest, who happened to be a Libyan refugee, outside of some exclusive club that he couldn't get into and forgot about him. And then while reading these stories, I'm going to kind of give myself kudos for not ever listening, following, or caping, as they call it now, for most of these jerks. Let's go ahead and read the article. This is from the spectator.us. Uh, their international section. Wogi Leaks does Davos. Oh, can you imagine? Plus, what's in the internal social justice portal for Northrop Grumman employees? World Economic Forum. Davos. Written by they them. The second in a regular column by an anonymous whistleblower operating deep within the heart of the social justice movement. To protect their identity, they will go under the code name they them. WokeyLeaks is a confidential news leak organization for anyone who wishes to divulge classified information and hilarious antidotes about woke culture without fear of getting canceled. Thank you. We have been completely overwhelmed by the huge number of brave Edward Snowflakes out there that have messaged us on our encrypted email. And he gives the email. You can go to it if you want. I'll leave, I'll put the uh, link to this article also in the description if you'd like to read it yourself and find out more about WokeyLeaks. I'll read on. Of all the WokeyLeaks we've received, perhaps the most jaw-dropping is from an employee at one of the largest arms companies in the world, Northrop Grumman. Northrop has made billions supplying much of the hardware for America's invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. It also supplies training to Saudi Arabian forces that, according to the UN, have been perpetrating war crimes in Yemen. But don't worry about any of that, because apparently Northrop Grumman has created an internal social justice portal for its employees, training them in how to avoid microaggressions in the workplace and unconscious bias and micro inequities. I gotta say, those words literally sound made up and they're so hard to say. It's like a different language. He goes on, <laughs> talk about gender neutral bathrooms on the Death Star. Oh, right. As a bleeding heart lefty, who has campaigned against all of America's illegal invasions, I can't help feeling that my movement has been somewhat diluted if it is now about ensuring that arms dealers don't get triggered while flogging intercontinental ballistic missiles to brutal regimes. I have a tendency to agree with him here. In contrast, our more hawkish anonymous source is concerned that it is a threat to national security to have an American defense company creating a social justice portal so that employees could learn how racist America is as cities burned across the country last summer. They go on to ask, how can a defense contractor 
continue to provide services to our men and women in uniform while simultaneously spreading critical race theory premised on the fact that America must be deconstructed. We're coming at this issue from two completely opposite perspectives, and yet we are both in total agreement that the whole scenario is utter fucking nonsense. Wow, it's starting to seem that left and right aren't that much different. I'll read on. Although perhaps we shouldn't be that surprised. The wokest place on earth, after all, is not the Berkeley campus or Seattle's Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, but the exclusive Swiss ski resort of Davos, which in any normal year would just have hosted the World Economic Forum. This week-long event sees the most powerful and wealthy people on the planet fly in on private jets to discuss climate change and equality. I have visited the WEF many times. The whole thing is completely surreal. CEOs, oligarchs, and dictators, and for some reason, will I am, wander down the plush high street under the watchful eye of rooftop snipers. Huge billboards advertise the humanitarian work of Saudi Arabia's murderous crown prince Mohammed bin Salman. You pop in to watch a panel on diversity featuring an executive from a tax-avoiding multinational, a retired war criminal and Lord Voldemort. The last one's a joke, but only just. Last year, the theme of the event was environmental sustainability, and yet sponsors included the Adani Group, currently building one of the world's biggest coal mines that threatens to destroy the Great Barrier Reef, Saudi Aramco, possibly the worst polluter in the world over the last 50 years with plans to produce oil and gas equivalent to 27 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide by 2030. That's nine years. And Dow Chemicals, whose pesticides have been destroying the world's bees. And these are the people that are claiming people like you and I are destroying the planet. I don't think we have even half the impact these big conglomerates have. The other group that always makes a strong appearance at Davos are the Femoisi. This is what he has named the elite stars and celebrities and whatnot. And yes, that includes politicians. Society's large and growing famous class who trade in woke ideology. They are models, actors, reality TV stars, and pop stars. They come to Davos to network, party, ski, and to receive WEF's Crystal Award for Cultural Leaders. These uh, celebrities have never been my leaders. This cozy relationship between corporations and the verified leaders of the social justice movement has been terrible for actual social justice. I have a tendency to agree with him here. I haven't seen so much racism in all my life. And I studied what happened during Jim Crow, and I studied what happened during the Civil War, and I studied what happened during slavery. All of them. The Femoisie have been almost completely silent on the gargantuan bonanza of bullshit that is Davos, preferring instead to focus their vast array of opinions on one single thing. Actually, one single person. Can you guess? And Davos agrees with them here too. When Trump attended WEF last year, there was a palpable sense of shock in the air much more so than at the presence of dictators like Xi Jinping. Yeah, they were surprised that another billionaire showed up that wasn't on their page, to be polite. At this year's virtual WEF, Xi gave the keynote speech. The brutal authoritarian taking time out from enslaving Uyghur Muslims and imprisoning Hong Kong protesters to talk about one earth and one shared future for your humanity. I have been to China. This is not a good thing. 
This was followed by a gushing thank you from WEF founder Klaus Schwab, who praised G for finding harmony in the diversity of human civilization through respectful interaction. I wonder what would happen if Klaus was made to tell that to the Uyghurs. You see, the worst crime you can commit at Davos is to be gauche. The super rich go to Paris for their fashion, they go to London's Frise for their art, and they go to Davos for their social justice. The oxy moronic genius of Trump was to see that half of the world is sick to death of the phony righteousness of the Davos elites. All he had to do to seem like an honest alternative was to offend as many of them as possible. Why do you think half of America still voted for the incompetent dummy despite his endless failures? <laughs> it's because when they look at wokeness these days, they see the faux piety of corporations and the famoisie, and they despise it so profoundly that they elected the political equivalent of an un-PC stand-up comic. I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. Yes, he had many failures. Have you ever had any failures? You've just been perfect your entire life, your entire career. You've never bombed anything. You've never had to start over again. How lucky for you. Just remember, most successful people have failed more times than any failure has ever tried. So, I'll read on. Someone who fits in extremely well at Davos is Joe Biden, who is a regular face at the event. Big surprise there. Of the two, Biden was, of course, my preferred septuagenarian with dementia, but you have to worry about anyone who is also the darling of every evil corporation on the planet. Donald Trump's apparent realness was, of course, a heist on his base. Bullshit. As we saw from his weaselly volt face after his Capitol Hill riots. They weren't his Capitol Hill riots. But it was at least a different heist from that of Davos man. I really hope Biden can unify the nation, fix the environment, and tackle inequality, as my fellow citizens of Wokenia seem to believe, with even more unanimity than usual, there was much justified celebration at the largely symbolic decision to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, but there has been very little criticism of his refusal to ban fracking. I made this point the other day on a woke WhatsApp group named Inquisitive Minds. Boy, they are always just the exact opposite, aren't they? Which has an image of John Stuart Mill as its icon. Not long after, I was sent a direct message by the group admin to say that some other members were offended by my use of language. And would I mind voluntarily leaving the group so it didn't seem as if I'd been kicked out? You want me to excuse myself to make you look good? It's no wonder that people are turning on the famoisie, as he puts it. Maybe we're all Davos man now. Appearances are everything. But maybe the real danger to the planet isn't the easy to spot caricature villains, but the ones that like to dress up as superheroes. Next time we plan to cover more of the stories you have leaked to Woke Elites, the, the email, please keep them coming. If we haven't gotten back to you yet, we will. We didn't expect quite such a huge response. That goes to show you how many people have been so afraid to tell everybody how much this is such bullshit most of the time. Yeah, I'm sorry, you cannot tell me that there is a wage gap and then tell me that there's no such thing as men or women. It just doesn't work. Now, to start with, just so I can get it over with, the Trump bashing and the Biden worship makes me a little bit nervous about this author. However, the latter part of his statement about Biden seems to be hopefully sarcastic. However, it seems that even after Trump has been gone and most social media have unpersoned him, if you will, Trump still seems to be living rent-free in a lot of these elitists' heads. This kind of thing makes me wonder what he actually has on a lot of them. You can't forget, this man is a celebrity as well.
Okay. Uh, one of the things they actually try to use against him, if you can fathom the irony of that. The man has been in many movies and TV shows, and he's had his own show for quite a while. Hell, he even had a star at Grumman's Theater. They had to think he was one of them at one time or another, or else that star wouldn't exist. Also, don't forget, Trump also became way more wealthy and way more famous than most of them as well. I mean, how many people know who Trump is, and I do mean worldwide? Now, think about how many people know who, say, Seth Rogen is, or even Michael Moore, Demi Moore, Susan Sarandon, Bette Midler, Cher. From what I know about human nature, these people seem to be the jealous cowards who never really left high school status, at least in their mindsets anyway, and the way that they act. This and They Them's first article is beginning to convince me that the opinions that I formed early on about most of these stars, if you will, seems to be right on the money. I started feeling, especially after some of their begging and shaming montages, that these actors and celebrities are narcissists pretending to be self-hating narcissists. So you and me, the consumers, would see them as victims to better sell their idiot ideas and push the notion that anyone that is not in their clique is the cause of theirs and their causes problems and oppressions and are the bad people for not even knowing about most of the drivel that they just made up. I've always said to these folks that we're always raising awareness about everything. Okay, I'm aware now. Now what? And it's always the same. Give money. Well, guess what? I don't have money. Now, does anyone ever ask just exactly where this money goes? I don't know about every single one of them, but most charities, especially ones that are headed and founded or founded by an elitist, usually give anywhere from 0, .0 to 0% of their incoming donations to the actual cause. While their CEOs and special interests rake in six and seven figure salaries with perks like cars, houses, and even more business ventures, and of course, things you probably wouldn't even dream of. Meanwhile, they're not only totally ignoring the half century of Biden's racism, bad bills, and utter incompetence, but also praising a literal dictator with concentration camps and all. He literally has those. I'm looking at you, Miss AOC. The fact that our weapons makers have decided to push this woke bullshit is something beyond belief as well. Of course, like I say, when you institute something like that and it starts to spread usually by some kind of mandate, I guarantee you. In fact, wasn't that one of the first EOs that was signed? The fact that they then point out that these elitists celebrate the Paris Agreement, which actually does nothing but transfer money from the United States to every country on the planet, including and especially those that have promised to do something about their contributions to climate change in 20 or 30 years, and that the agreement is largely symbolic to globalism, but ignore his hesitance to now ban fragging tells me that they don't know what's really going on. They just want to be popular. They just want ex the acceptance of their peers and the coziness of their fame without any scrutiny. By the way, who are or is the person or people that come up with all of this stuff for the in crowd to be the in crowd? Why are they deemed such authorities on this crap? Is it the producers and funders of their now more than ever woke? Movies, sitcoms, magazines, media, and news? Do they have their own 4chan? Perhaps they, them, will reveal the answer to these questions as well. I can't wait. Can you? <laughs> 
I do hope that you enjoyed my video today. If you'd like me to continue my work and you're enjoying my work, please try to support me by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, and of course sharing would be the best thing. Also, a donation would be the ultimate, and I'm still sending out gifts for donations that come in. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.